Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amr Abdullah. Today, I will be presenting my master's thesis defense, which talks about sensitivity analysis for defected and FRP rehabilitated corroded pipes using finite element modeling. I would like to take this chance to thank my supervisor committee, Professor Dr. Amr Nimr and Professor Dr. Ahab Al Aghuri, for their limitless support and motivation throughout my work. I will start by giving an introduction and my research objectives. I will talk about traditional ways of rehabilitation, validation of experimental work by finite element analysis, and then we will discuss the major part of this work which talks about pipes sensitivity analysis and burst pressure prediction. Uh, after that, I will discuss the rehabilitation of the defected pipes using FRP. Finally, I will give a conclusion and future recommendations for other researchers to take into consideration. Circular hole sections are used in many applications, but mainly as pipelines in the oil and gas industry. The advancement of, of human civilization and scarcity of natural resources led to exploration deeper into the Earth's crust eventually increasing the underground high pressure and subsea draining activities. However, steel pipes that are laid underwater and underground can go through adverse deterioration in the form of corrosion, cracks, dents and rupture. All these scenarios might include different kind of loads in addition to internal pressure like bending moment, axial force and temperature variation. As we can see in this image, due to water flow, the pipe starts to bend, which causes additional loads and stresses to the internal pressure that the pipe is working with. In the other image, we might see bending at the center of the span due to loss of support, so there are Two kinds of loads combined, current and wave action, in addition to axial tension and compression number. Corrosion is one of the main causes of steel deterioration in general, and especially steel pipes that are subjected to severe environmental conditions. Corrosion causes a reduction in the cross-sectional area of the member, leading to the increase of stress, which causes early failure of the steel section. Corrosion exists in different types, size, and shapes orientations. As we can see here, the corrosion might be internal corrosion or external co corrosion. Well, there, are, there are many types of corrosion, as we can see. Crevice corrosion, which happens near bolts and washers. Hydrogen-induced cracking, which another type of corrosion happens in the well itself. Stress corrosion cracking which happens when corrosion is combined with tensile stresses. Galvanic corrosion when two dissimilar metals are in contact together. All corrosion might be a uniform corrosion throughout the whole cross-section. Our research objectives can be summarized into three points. Introducing a new failure model for pipes subjected to internal pressure. Introduce a method of repair, FRP, to the defected pipes which competes with traditional methods like welding or bolting, steel sleeves, or section replacement. Of course, section replacement is expensive, requires a lot of time and effort. Finally, the addition of finite element analysis model against experimental results. Now I will talk about some research gaps that I found while reviewing previous studies. Different corrosion parameters like length, depth, and width and their effect on the burst pressure that was not studied into depth. Previous studies didn't take into consideration different pipe sizes and steel grades. 
which is more affected by corrosion, larger or smaller pipes. The effect of rehabilitation using FRP on defective pipes with different corrosion parameters. The comparison between two fiber reinforced polymers, the carbon fiber and the E class fiber. Applying different thicknesses of FRP to defective pipes. Burst pressure prediction models that takes into account the width of the defect and provides more accurate results. Finally, creating design charts for corroded pipes with different corrosion parameters against the burst pressure of pipes. The traditional ways of corrosion rehabilitation can be summarized into welding or bolting sleeves over the deteriorated section and section replacement. Disadvantages of traditional methods of repair It is a labor intensive and time consuming process. Section replacement shuts down the pipeline, which decreases the productivity. Bolting sleeves might cause high stress concentration near bolts, and it's also expensive. It might cause also galvanic corrosion. Susceptibility of explosions or weld failure when using welding sleeves in case of oil and petroleum gas infrastructure. Bolted sleeves increase the possibility of crevice or galvanic corrosion around bolts and washers. As we can see welding sleeves in this case, you have to shut down the whole pipeline if you are welding uh, something explosive. Crevice corrosion which happens around washers and bolts and galvanic corrosion as discussed earlier when there are two dissimilar metals next to each other. I chose three cases from previous work to be validated using finite element analysis. I will discuss two cases here due to shortage of time. The first case is the rehabilitation of corroded steel circular hollow sections under combined bending and bearing using CFRP. There are three models in the finite element analysis. The first one is a bare pipe without corrosion. The second model is a 20% defected circumferentially uh, corroded pipe. The defected pipe is then rehabilitated using four plies, two transverse 90 degrees and two longitudinal 0 degrees with respect to the pipe longitudinal axis. The second case is a behavior of steel pipelines with composite repairs analyzed using experimental and numerical approaches where the pipe is subjected to pure internal pressure. A pipe introduced square defect and then find the failure pressure before and after defect. Finally, the defected pipe is rehabilitated with two sheets, one transverse 90 degrees and the other was zero degrees with respect to pipe longitudinal axis. The third case talks about torsional strengthening of steel circular hollow sections using carbon fiber reinforced polymers. Since this case talks about strengthening and not rehabilitation, so there are two models, a bare pipe subjected to torsion and strengthening using two layers with 45 degrees inclination. The material properties of both cases are entered into abacus. The stress strain curve of steel is provided and the CFRP is modeled as a lamina type where it requires six inputs, modulus of elasticity in the transverse and axial direction, Poisson's ratio and the shear modulus in the three directions. Also the tensile strength was given, the ply thickness was 0.28 millimeters and similar thing is done for the e-glass material properties obtained from previous literature. Concerning the first case where the pipe is subjected to three-point bending, the outer diameter of the pipe was 100 and 101.6 mm, the wall thickness was 5 mm, the corrosion percent was 20%, so the remaining thickness is 4 mm, 
and the thickness of corrosion is 100 millimeters. Abacus element, continuum, eight nodes, three degrees of freedom, reduced integration element is used and adopted from literature. Partitions are used to control the mesh near the corroded part where we have finer mesh and the mesh size increases until reaching a maximum size of 30 multiplies 30 millimeters. Concerning the boundary conditions, both points were fixed and the other point here introduced a vertical deformation of 120 millimeters. So the direction U2 vertically, it was not restrained. Finally, we can see the experimental pipe after testing and the equivalent FEA model. I should give a hint about the failure mode obtained. It was FRP rupture, matrix crushing under transverse compression and shear. Since Hutchins failure was adopted and Smith. In order to compare the finite element analysis and experimental program, I had to plot the load versus deflection curves. There is a strong agreement between both cases where the pipe has 20% corrosion defect. There is an accuracy of 95% between both curves at failure point. And similar results are obtained for the non-defected pipe. However, for the case of the repaired pipe, I had to do some iterations since the damage properties of FRP were not determined, so I did two trials. The second, the first trial gave failed at 106 kN, while the second one failed at 76 kN, and if and the experimental failure was 72 kN, so further calibrations are needed for this case. Now, let's talk about the second case of validation, where the pipe is subjected to internal pressure. The pipe had an outer diameter of 168.3 mm, with thickness of 7.11 mm, where the defect was 50%. The defect had a form of square with those dimensions. As we can see, this pipe represents a defective pipe done in the experiment, and this is the equivalent model. As I did in the previous validation, the corrosion uh, was reduced from the thickness of the pipe. The mesh size of the defected case was finer than the other pipe in order to decrease the running time and also provide accurate results. This is the pipe after testing where the red zone means that the failure pressure is obtained in this zone which corresponds also to the failure obtained in the experiment. Now let's talk about the agreement between finite element analysis and experimental program. For the case of the defected pipe, both models failed at 25.4 megapascal with a slightly different strain. So there is an accuracy of 90% of strain. Concerning the repaired pipe, the strain gauges failed at 21 megapascal. That was according to the literature. However, he mentioned that the repaired pipe failed at 33 megapascal, while my model failed at 35 megapascal, and there is 91% accuracy in the achieved strain at 13 megapascal, which corresponds to 72% of the specified minimum yield strength. Now, I, I combined all the cases in one graph. This, uh, this uh, I'm sorry, this green curve represents the non-defected 
pi failure which was 42 megapascal that that is obtained using finite element analysis because the author didn't make a bare pipe test in the experiment the FEA repaired pipe failure was 35 megapascal and the experimentally repaired pipe failure was around 21 megapascal it is limited by the strain gauges failure however he mentioned that it reached 33 megapascal in the experiment and finally the defective pipe failure was 25.4 megapascal and we can notice a, a significant strain reduction between both the defected pipe and the repaired pipe now the pipe sensitivity analysis and burst pressure prediction numerical sensitivity analysis is done to determine the vulnerability of bursting pressure of pipes against corrosion there are four parameters in the parametric study the first one is the pipe size represented by the d to t ratio diameter to thickness ratio four pipe sizes are used with the following diameter to thickness ratios the second is the defect angle or the defect width four angles are also used the third parameter is the length of corrosion to diameter ratio four lengths of corrosion to diameter ratios are adopted and finally the corrosion levels I used the three corrosion levels 25% 50% and 75% We can take a look also at those parameters in the pipe section. So that is the length of corrosion to diameter. And if we take a section in this uh, defected part, we can see this is the angle of defect. And that is the reduction of the thickness representing the real corrosion. The burst pressure calculation for defect free pipes to be used in finite element analysis is obtained from equations from the literature. First, pipes should be classified into thick walled or thin walled because the distribution of stresses will not be the same in both cases. So, the first solution does not differentiate between thin and thick walled, however, the other solution separates between them. So, the, the second solution was adopted here since it provided more accurate results. This pressure will be used in finite element analysis. A total of 192 finite element models for all pipes are created to obtain the burst pressure for each defect case. For example here, uh, this case for the amplitude to thickness 16.9 for each length of corrosion to diameter ratio, defect, degree, and reduction of thickness, there is a failure pressure. The failure pressure is the pressure that causes the hoop stresses to reach the ultimate tensile strength based on the available literature. The same thing is done for the other pipes as well. Now I plotted a series of graphs to represent the sensitivity analysis. Of pipes against corrosion we can see from these graphs that the length of corrosion to diameter ratio is not effective at all for shallow defects regardless the width of corrosion the L C to D ratio length of corrosion to diameter ratio becomes more effective with deeper and wider defects similar results are obtained for other pipes too We can now put the angle of defect on the x-axis to have a better visualization of the effect of angle of defect on the reducing of burst pressure of pipes. The angle of defect becomes more effective with deeper and longer defects. It becomes nearly constant at 45 degrees for short length of corrosion to diameter thickness only. We can also combine all 
the defect parameters in one graph. However, it won't be very easy to judge the behavior. But for example, here we can see as this case, this uh, black triangle represents 15 degrees and the red represents 45 degrees and uh, the circle orange represents 90 degrees. <coughs> This line is a dash dot line, so it is 75%. So we can conclude that the angle of defect is effective at 75% at short length of corrosion to diameter ratio. However, this effect is decreasing as we reach a constant value at 1.5 length of corrosion to diameter ratio. The same thing is done for other pipes with other defects also. Now I will give a quick summary about the sensitivity analysis. Stress concentrations are more likely to happen with narrow defects at the edges of the defect. As the defect gets wider, stress concentrations accumulate in the middle of the defect. So in order to judge about the results that we came with from the sensitivity analysis, I prepared this table of comparison so for example for the diameter to thickness of 16.19 the length of corrosion to diameter 25 and 150 percent defect angle 10 degrees and 45 degrees and at defect of 25 percent both failure pressures are nearly the same so there is a loss of 0.8 percent only the other case has the same parameters up with 75% uh, and the failure pressure uh, is about 23.5% so we can conclude that the length of corrosion to diameter is effective at deeper and wider defects. Also if we used the same uh, parameters with a larger pipe which has a diameter thickness of 79.95 we found the percent of loss is around 66%, which means that the length of corrosion to diameter and effect angle are more effective at larger pipes uh, than smaller pipes. And from the other uh, cases, we can conclude that the length of corrosion and diameter and effect angle are not effective at shallow defects and narrow defects regardless of the pipe size, since the loss is 7.6% and here it is 8.7%. Now previous prediction models against experimental tests. From the available uh, literature, I made a comparison between seven uh, previous prediction models. The failure stress in these models are different. The defect shape adopted is also different. Some models provide uh, separate equations for long and short corrosions, while others uh, do not differentiate between uh, long or short corrosion at all. However, from the, from the available uh, literature also, we found that the first two models uh, ASME B31J, which stands for American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and the modified part, they provide conservative results for shallow and long defects. The remaining strength criteria is conservative for short defects, and the P pipe corrosion criteria is less conservative for shallow defects. The same with uh, long pipe corrosion criteria. Finally, the solution provided by LEASE and the DNV uh, it provided more accurate results against experimental tests. However, we should take into consideration that no model considers the effect width while calculating the burst pressure model. Now I made a comparison between the results obtained from the finite element and previous prediction models. The finite element analysis results are in good agreement 
with the last solution given by Lees and the DNV with a mean error ranging from 0 and 15% and similar results are provided for the other pipes too. Now let's talk about the finite element analysis against prediction models and the experimental database. So the first pressure database contains 79 pipes with natural and machine defects. It included a variety of diameter thicknesses ratio ranging from 10.3 to 108.8 .8, and different steel grades ranging from uh, extra strong 42 to X80. Since my finite element model used steel with lower ultimate tensile strength than that used in the experimental test, so I, I had to find a way to link both results together by plotting the burst pressure obtained from experimental and the burst pressure obtained from finite element analysis to introduce, uh, introduce this steel grade factor 1.4552. This factor will be multiplied by my results to be compared with the experimental tests. In order to create a design equation, I had to find a fitting model to be used for the parametric study. So here we have a fitting model for diameter to thickness 16.9 at length of corrosion to diameter of 25 so I have a design equation for each length to diameter ratio for each pipe so there are four equations for each pipe size these are the fitting models for other uh, pipe sizes and finally a, B, C, D, E, and F are the model fitting equations where X1 and X2 are the defect degree and corrosion percent respectively while Y is the failure pressure. And the other pipes also I obtained their model fitting coefficients. Now model fitting equation against the real finite element analysis results the percentage of error between the real value and the fitted value is between 0.04% and 11% for all pipes which means that the model fitting equation uh, could reasonably uh, represent the, the real values of the finite element analysis results Now the previous prediction models against the experimental tests for finite element analysis validation. For this case, I plotted machine defect normalized pressure versus corrosion level on the X axis. And I compared between the prediction models using the mean square error, so the finite element represented here in the yellow uh, cross mark as the minimum mean square error against the, the against one which represents uh, the unity of the experimental tests so finite element model has the minimum mean square error against all the previous prediction models and we can see that most of the models provided very conservative results especially at uh, deep defects for the case of natural defects the same thing is, uh, is obtained where most of the models provide conservative results here in the, uh, in, the in the deep defects and also the finite element model has the minimum mean square error compared to other models however the mean square error in the case of natural defect is somehow more than the mean square error in uh, the machine defects you can also put 
the length of corrosion to diameter ratio on the x-axis however these are the same graphs but with different x-axis we can also find that all or most of the models provide very conservative results at small to relatively high length of corrosion however the finite element model could provide conservative results for small or short corrosions however it might not be uh, conservative for short, uh, long corrosions however it has it is considered to be the most accurate <coughs> model in terms of the mean square error the same thing is obtained for machine defects now after validating the finite element analysis uh, models I created design charts to facilitate the design process so the designer can use only the pipe size knowing the length of corrosion over the diameter and the defect angle or defect width he can obtain the failure pressure for um, by knowing also uh, the corrosion level however he can interpolate between these values if he has different corrosion levels And finally, I made also the design curves for other defect cases. Now the rehabilitation using CFRP. The defective pipes are then rehabilitated using CFRP in order to enhance their pressure capacity. According to the literature, the best FRP orientation is to be perpendicular to the expected crack in the pipe. So all FRP has a 90 degrees rotation with respect to the pipe longitudinal axis. In order to find the best number of plies to be used, I made uh, this comparison for one pipe only with one with uh, one uh, defect case. However, the optimum number of plies should vary for each defect case and pipe size however that is out of scope of this research so I find I found out that the best number of plies is 4 where the thickness of ply is 0 0.15 since it has a maximum gain uh, with respect to the failure pressure and also the CFRP material properties are adopted from the available lit uh, literature After that, I made a comp uh, pressure comparison between the bare pipe uh, burst pressure and the repaired pipe burst pressure for all the cases of uh, pipe sizes. Now let's talk about the effect of FRP on the defected pipes. We can see there is a significant uh, strength gain for the defected pipes in comparison to the non uh, repaired ones and also we can see that the effect of uh, angle of defect is nearly eliminated as well as the length of corrosion to the amateur ratio so all pipes behave the same due to confinement of FRP and also the same thing is obtained for other defect angles and other pipes now we can talk about repaired pipes summary so for a diameter to thickness of 16.19 if we change it the length of corrosion to diameter so the increase is between 21% and 27% so we can conclude that the effect of length of corrosion to diameter is nearly eliminated for other pipes like the pipe which has 42.64 diameter to thickness ratio we can conclude that the pressure gain in deeper defects is more than shallow defects
Finally, if we change the defect angle while maintaining other parameters as uh, as they are, so we can conclude that the effect of angle of defect is nearly eliminated, regardless of the pipe size. <coughs> I should say, say that at the end that narrow defects have lower stress concentration than wide defects. The low stress concentrations are transferred to the putty field and FRP wrap increasing the burst pressure in pipes or delaying the hoof stresses to reach the ultimate inside strength. The stress concentrations in longer and wider defects will not be uniform, so higher hoop stresses are experienced by the pipe. Therefore, the composite repair pipe will fail at lower pressure values. The same thing done for generating the design equation for the non-repaired pipe is done here for the repaired pipes. The same fitting model is used. These are the fitting equations and models for other uh, pipe sizes. And also I obtained the model fitting coefficients. The serviceability limit state is discussed through obtaining the maximum allowable operating pressure. This maximum allowable operating pressure is related to the specified minimum yield strength and a factor of safety. The specified minimum yield strength is used because the, the operator cannot run their pipeline at pressures higher than the pipe was designed for. For example, a pipeline may qualify for X52, but it was designed as X42. So the operator must run at X42 pressures. That's why there is this term specified minimum yield strength. Both the American National Standards Institute and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers provided design equations to obtain the maximum allowable operating pressure. It is equal to 2 multiplies the specified minimum yield strength multiplies wall thickness divided by the outer diameter multiplied 3 design factors or safety factors. The specified minimum yield strength and the design safety factors are also obtained from the ANSI and ASME code. After that, I substitute the equation for different pipe sizes and obtain the maximum allowable operating pressure at the specified minimum yield strength and as well as at the yield strength of steel. Then, a pressure comparison for, uh, for the different defect parameters and the pressure to reach the specified minimum yield strength is obtained for all the pipes. Now let's discuss modes of failure. There are three possible modes of failure, steel fracture, FRP rupture and debonding. The debonding is not uh, discussed here since it was not uh, found in the available literature for this case of loading. So a stress-based failure criteria is adopted in this work. Steel fracture occurs when the hoop stresses reach the ultimate tensile strength, while it yields when it reaches the specified minimum yield strength. Unlike steel, FRP is a brittle material which fails by rupture. So FRP will rupture when the strain reaches the maximum allowable strain given by 1.04%. After that, I made a pressure comparison for the defected pipes, repaired pipes, and FRP rupture pressure, and the pressure to reach the, uh, the specified minimum yield strength. And failure mode is determined as FRP rupture for all cases since FRP rupture is the minimum pressure between the repaired pipe and FRP rupture. And uh, similar things is done for other pipes too. There is also a significant strain reduction due to the application of FRP. So, uh, it's around uh, eighty percent strain reduction. The, this uh, red curve is a pipe with FRP, while the blue one's pipe without FRP. So there is a significant strain reduction 
regardless of the effect size. So, the conclusion and future recommendations. The corrosion level is the most significant parameter to decrease the pipe pressure. The various capacities are not significantly affected by the angle of defect and the length of corrosion to diameter ratio at shallow corrosions. As the DT ratio increases, the reduction in burst capacity is more affected by the length, angle of defect, and corrosion level. The angle of defect becomes more effective in reducing the capacity as the LD increases. However, it is constant for all angles at 75%. The effect of FRP confining nearly eliminated the length and angle of defect at 25 and 50%, however it decreased at 75%. Stress concentrations are more likely to happen with narrow defects as obtained in literature and as the area of defect gets wider, stress concentrations in the middle of defect increased. There is a significant strain reduction and pressure gain which proves the effectiveness using FRP. FRP pressure capacity is significantly affected by both corrosion level and corrosion length. As the corrosion level and corrosion length increases, the FRP capacity decreases. The governing failure mode is FRP rupture, which is also obtained in literature. As discussed earlier, the FRP capacity decreases when the effect gets wider. It is advisable to increase the serviceability limit state to be more than 72% of the specified minimum yield strength. This will decrease pipe sizes and reduce materials and costs. For future research, it is recommended to combine different forces like flexure or axial forces in addition to internal pressure because pipes might experience such a case while operating in the field. Changing FRP thickness is also recommended as it has a great effect on the burst capacity and strain reduction. Changing, changing the material properties of FRP and steel may also be required to have better judge and provide more accurate prediction results. Stress concentrations near edges of defect should be further investigated. Further prediction models should be developed since there is a great variation between applied models in the industry and FEA models. Thank you for